What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the park, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the same. And right now, I feel like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders. Um, Some you've heard of, some you've you've never heard of. You know, it's funny. um, I had, uh, you know, David and and Derek, I had um, Nolan Bushnell, who uh, started Atari and his um, men, you know, he was a mentor of Steve Jobs. And in the interview, he talks about Steve Jobs offered him 33% of Apple for $50,000 and why he said no. So I want I want to hear your guys maybe Steve or uh, you know Nolan Bushnell story of something you're like I can't believe we passed on that. Um, another episode with Dan Zawacki. Big thank you for introducing me to the Firefly Group. Um, Dan Zawacki, you know, founded the Lobster Gram and they delivered yeah. live lobsters and seafood around the country, which was groundbreaking in the '80s. And um, he was the first person in the world to do it. He was featured on Forbes, The Wall Street Journal. Journal, Oprah, and many more media outlets for what he did. And uh, now he runs Four Mores, which he helps organizations implement EOS. Um, I have had Gino Wickman on before talking about EOS as well. And that was a great episode. Um, before I tell you about today's really uh, rock star guest, this episode is brought to you by Rise 25. Uh, Rise 25, I co-founded my business partner, John Corcoran, and we help businesses give to their best relationships um, by helping them run their podcast. You know, for me, um, you know, Dave and Derek, for me, you know, relationships are the number one thing in my life. And I'm always looking at a way to give to my best relationships, profiling their company, their thought leadership. And over since 2008, um, the podcast has been the best way that has allowed me to profile many amazing people. And so if you are a company out there, you're thinking of, you know, gaining authority, you know, increasing your content marketing, all the other benefits, um, go to rise25.com, email us, and uh, we're happy to answer any questions. Today's guest I'm excited about, um, we have David Mann and Derek Smith, they're partners at the Firefly Group, and they invest in growth-oriented lower middle market companies. And we're going to talk about why they invest in certain companies and why some they don't, and they have criteria of investing yeah, I'm kind of broadly speaking, you guys correct me if I'm wrong, US-based companies with EBITDA of at least a million dollars, and they have to have good systems in place like EOS, and they invest in franchises and many more. David um, Mann, prior to co-founding the Firefly Group, co-founded Spring Mill Venture Partners, which is a venture capital firm, and he worked with Service Master Ventures and served as a founding member of the Service Master Home Service Center, which was interesting, David, to me, I'll have you talk about it, but a joint venture between Kleiner Perkins and Service Master. And he's such a slacker. He began his career as an officer in the U.S. Navy and he got his MBA at Harvard and is an adjunct faculty at the Indiana University Kelly School of Business. And Derek Smith, prior to co-founding the Firefly Group, led the launch of a family office. He served as managing director and he began his career with CHV Capital and helped start and lead Indiana University's Health International and Management Company. Um, Thanks both for joining me. Yeah, thanks for having us. It's great to be on. So I figure you would start on um, how the team came together. Yeah, let's do that. I think Derek tells that story really well. So Derek, if I'm putting you on the spot here, but please, uh, please tell that story. Happy to. Uh, Jeremy, thanks for having us on. We're, we're honored uh, to be on here and to have the opportunity to tell our story. So um, the the three of us at the Firefly Group, we all have a passion around uh, family-owned businesses, um, serving people, and and growing uh, businesses and growing people. Um, The way that we uh, started the business, David and Mark uh, were classmates at Harvard. Uh, They did a variety of things uh, over the years and then um, found their passion in this niche of family-owned uh, privately held small to medium sized businesses. Um, I was doing venture healthcare venture capital, loved the work, and then I found a passion in this same area. I got to meet David around that time. David and Mark had had started looking at some opportunities. I had started looking at some opportunities. I recruited 
a former colleague at uh, Indiana University Health where I was doing venture work to come work with me. David and Mark were, were doing the same thing. And David had the vision. He's our visionary. I'm our integrator. Um, that's EOS talk for those of you out there that uh, know that or use EOS to operate your company. David had the vision to bring us together. And I think the reason he did was number one, the values alignment. We are uh, um, maniacal about a, a set of core values that help define how we act and what we do. And so we have a, this common set of core values. And then there's a variety of skill sets. Of, I don't know what assessments uh, you've taken, Jeremy, but um, there's All a variety of them, of them out there. <laughs> yeah. Colby, uh, if, if, uh, I mean, you name Colby, it. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, you look at our Colby, you look at our DISC, you look at our culture index, uh, predictive index, assessment scores, you'll see why the personality uh, traits of each of us, the behavioral characteristics fit really well. David and I are more quick start, let's jump in, big vision, um, see the good in everything. Mark uh, and Drew McHouston, who was a, a co-founder as well and has moved on to become CFO at uh, EOS, are much more data-driven, fact-driven, slow, uh, and that's good. That's a really good balance. And so the combination of core values, personality fit, uh, and a shared passion. David saw that and had the vision to bring us together. I want to talk about, you mentioned core values and I want to hear about your core, core values, but you know, before we hit record, David, we were talking about, I was asking what's been a deal that everything on the surface looked amazing. It, it kind of got through, uh, different passes, uh, in your company. And then, um, you passed on it for whatever reason. Yeah, it's a good question, Jeremy. I think, um, as you said, there's, there's a, we look at maybe 300 or so a year to do one. Uh, so it's, uh, we're, we're going through a lot of companies and over time been doing this long enough. I think that there's certainly people a lot smarter than me, but I'm, I'm fairly disciplined about it. And you pick up patterns over time. And so we've, we've found a number of companies who they fit our size, fit our geography, fit an industry we like. And I can start falling in love with that pretty quick as Derek described some of our assessments and I'm a quick start on the Kobe. All right. You're like, let's go for it. It's good. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> let's, roll, let's roll. And you continue to get to know the people. And at the end of the day, if we back away and we meet all those criteria, it's a core values issue. And we've touched on core values here. And I'm not here to assess if there's a right or wrong, but it wasn't a match with ours and how we're trying to live our lives and what we're trying to do. And so earlier in my career, I probably was, oh, that's okay. We can fight through that. That'll be fine. But over time, like, no, we can't. Because even if the company ends up su being successful, none of us are going to have much fun along the way. And part of it is we want to enjoy it. We're going to we want to enjoy the time. We're putting a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into this. And we're going to be together a long time. So it's those, it comes back to those core values and that core values match that is, is why we end up walking away. Um, when it meets all the other criteria. What would be an example, you don't have to name names, but like a, a not matched up core value. What did you see with one of those companies that kind of made it through all of the checks? And then I'm just wondering what they did or said, or what was one of their core values that did not match with yours? Yeah, so I'll, I'll let Derek talk about this too, but I'll just, let me just start. At one of those is that we have a core value of humble confidence. So we want to be confident. I can see how people can mess that one up. Yeah, <laughs> take a stand. <laughs> but uh, there's some people who they have to have all. They always have the right answer. They have to always do it their way. And we want to combine heads because we're a, we're a team in this, and we want to come together to be successful together and have that humility that. We don't have all the answers or I don't have all the answers and we're going to be better together. So that's one that jumps out to me. I don't know if Derek, mm. there's something else that stands out to you on that one. Yeah, there's a, there's a couple of others. Um, uh, one is bold action. Uh, we define that at the Firefly group as like think big and go do. Uh, not every entre entrepreneur has big vision um, for their business. And, and that's something that's important to us. We want to do big things. We want to make a huge impact in the world if we can and align with entrepreneurs who share in that. And 
Uh, let's see. I, I think another one uh, I think of is compassionate accountability. That's another one of our core values. Um, so like any business owner, we, we would love to see results. We want excellence within the company. Um, but we want to do it in a way that, that builds people up and doesn't tear them down. Uh, because we believe if you get the people part right, you can get the performance part right. And, uh, and uh, there's, there's a lot of people in the world that maybe don't see it the same way. Mm. Yeah, I could see also in the think big and then go do, there may be some that think big and then don't, don't go do also, right? Yeah. That's, that's um, right. Yeah, there's th- they're spending most of their time thinking instead of doing. We, we need a little both. We love the thinking, but we got to have the doing too. So it's so just a combination. Compassion, accountability, humble confidence, bold action. And one of them, uh, the other ones is have fun. So have are there fun. ones you come across that don't meet that one? Certainly there are. I mean, you think about it like I just think about what are the people who what do I enjoy in my life? Where am I trying to live in my life? How do what are my priorities in life I'm trying to live? And so you find people who don't match those or what their idea of fun is in mine. Uh, somebody's idea of fun is, hey, I'm going to make the most money as I can, as hard as I can, whatever it takes to get there. And that's fine. That may be as you define, quote unquote, fun. But as we've defined it, we think about some other things. So. Yeah. And do the right thing. Um, you know, kind of act with honor always. I'm wondering, Dave, you could talk about some of the lessons you learned at the U S Naval Academy. Yeah. So that's the, the basis of, I had the good fortune to, to, to attend the Naval Academy. It was life changing to me. I was a blue collar kid from a little town in the banks of the Ohio river in Indiana. So they had the chance to go off there and meet the people I did. Uh, the, the, the core values of the Naval Academy is honor, courage, and commitment. Honor is number one. Do the right, do the right thing regardless of the consequences to yourself. And that's something that it's always it can be hard to live by. But that was ingrained in me over four years. The people I met who were living it, uh, it it's just become part of who I am and the basis of much of my my personal core values and how I try to live my life. I'm certainly not perfect at it, but uh, it started certainly with my parents, but the, what I learned at the Naval Academy, it's, it's, it was life-changing. I take with me forever. Yeah. And I want to talk about both of you, um, you know, David, what, so when you were growing up, what did you want to be when you grew up? It's interesting, Jeremy, because in, I grew up in a, a little town and Derek, Derek grew up in a small town too. But it's the things I knew, I, I thought there were five jobs. I, and it's the ones I saw on TV. I saw a policeman, a fireman, a doctor, a couple other things. I didn't, that's, that was the extent of my knowledge. And there were parents of my classmates of mine and I saw their mom and dad might be coming home from work with a briefcase. Well, my parents didn't carry a briefcase and I'd be, I wonder what's in there. There must be some important stuff in there. What are those <laughs> important? This guy's a big deal or she's a big deal. What's in there? <laughs> I didn't even, I didn't know. And so I was going, it's even, I didn't know, frankly, when I went off to Harvard Business School, Jeremy, people said, hey, I want to go work at Goldman Sachs. I'm like, well, what's that? I want to go work at McKinsey. I'm like, what's McKinsey? I'm going to be in venture capital. Uh, what's venture capital? <laughs> I didn't, I knew nothing. So what did you, then you went to our, and Derek, uh, you're not going to escape this question either, but David, um, so when you're at Harvard, then how did you discover your path? I started seeing, okay, what, uh, just talking to people who, who are do, doing this longer than me, attending as many information sessions as I could. And I started seeing this venture capital and working with companies. I had the joy in my earlier, my career as a naval officer to lead teams. That was a great joy to me. I still, one of my greatest joys is being able to lead a team, but venture capital and private equity and doing things like that, you get to work with a a number of teams across that on on a strategic level. And that seemed like, wow, that's, that's really interesting. And so that's kind of put me on that path of how do I get into that field? Yeah. And we'll talk about Spring Mill, but um, so Derek, growing up for you, what did you want to be? Uh, it's a very similar story as David. Um, yeah, I, I didn't know a lot. Uh, in high school, I was pretty good at math and science, if I can remember. It's been a while and thought, you know, I'll go off to Indiana University and, and big public school and I'll, I'll, I'll major in science. So I got a degree in biology of all things. I wish I would have read uh, 
uh, Gino Wickman's new book, Entrepreneurial Leap, when I was about 18 years old, I think that could have uh, saved me a lot of time and money <laughs> because I didn't realize I was an entrepreneur um, until I had graduated from college and I met a guy by the name of Kyle Salyers, and he was one of the founders of CHV Capital. And he really had, he and a, a guy by the name of Matt Neff had a major, major impact on my professional life because they gave me an opportunity to work with them in venture capital. Like David, when they, when they mentioned venture capital to me, I'm like, what the heck is that? I don't even know what that is, but they were, they seemed like pretty great people and fun to work with. And so I, I spent a summer with them and it just changed my life. And, uh, it was there. I realized I was an entrepreneur and I just, ever since then I've, I've loved hanging around entrepreneurs, starting things, building. And, uh, but growing up, I just, I, I didn't know a lot, uh, uh, with, with the uh, small, uh, you know, rural high school I went to. David, who was one mentor that you look, look towards in your career? Yeah, it's been a, there's been a number of uh, naval officers over the year I, I look to and, and different role models. I, I remember uh, as a kid, there weren't a lot of books I like to read, but I love to read biographies because I could learn so much from them. Uh, the biography of Winston Churchill, like, wow, this guy, how, how he did this. And another great Naval Academy graduate and Roger Staubach, and who went off and served in the military and then became a professional football player and then built a great company of his own, which he eventually sold. So it's these these people who I may not have met with on a regular basis, but uh, role models in the sense of just being able to understand their story and, and learn learn from them and learn from their experiences was always always great. And I certainly have had I've had some good mentors and bosses over the years that stand out. But it's these biographies too that help tell the story. Yeah. Who um and talk about how EOS weaves into your journey. Yeah, let me, I'll start on that and then I'll let Derek certainly add to it. Back when I was doing venture capital in the early 2000s, in the mid 2000s there, um, you'd work with these companies and they'd be a startup and they'd be running hard and they would build technology, but they'd be trying to build a company and oftentimes they didn't have systems, they didn't have processes, they didn't have a rhythm, they, and they were off running in lots of different directions and people weren't necessarily aligned. And I was always looking for different tools that could be helpful to them when I was sitting on the board as a, a young new venture capitalist that could maybe add some value. And I came across uh, Gino Wickman's book, Traction. I read that, wow, this makes all the sense in the world. It was, there was no, as I call it, MBA mumbo jumbo. It was just practical stuff you could start using right away. And so I read that book and use it a little bit in some of our companies. And then a number of years later, when we started Firefly, um, I didn't even know if it was just a book, if there was a company behind it, I wasn't even sure. And we had someone that, who got us in contact with Gino and he had a call with us and we said, hey, Gino, is, is this a, just a book? Or is there a company behind it? He goes, yeah, there's a company behind it. It's doing really well. I'm like, do you ever want to sell it? He's like, nope. I'm like, oh, okay. And so, Six or eight months later, he happened to call us back and said, I think I'm going to sell the company. Like, really? Okay. Well, we'd love to acquire it. He goes, well, I've hired a banker and I have 12, 12 criteria for the buyer. And only one of those is price. A lot of people say that, but he really meant it. And so we entered the process to acquire EOS and we're fortunate to come out. And that was in 2017. And we acquired the company and joined them on the next phase of the journey in May of 2018. So it's been about two and a half years. That's amazing. Yeah, it's been fun. Um, so what is the next phase of the Derek, journey? Derek, you want to talk a little bit about that or I can keep going, but I want to make sure you chime in here. Yeah, I, I might just uh, add to, to your uh, question earlier, Jeremy. Um, I'll never forget the day that uh, David uh, shared the, the book Traction with me. And he's like, hey, I think you ought to read this book. So I was doing some strategic planning for a company I was involved with. And I'm like, you know what? I, I, I think I've got strategic planning down pretty well. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know about this book, David. He's like, just give it a read. Just read the first chapter. So I read the book and, and I immediately fell in love with the system and, and still love it to this day because it, it creates just enough structure in an entrepreneurial business to allow you to break through the ceiling, to stop solving the same issues, 
and yet still be entrepreneurial, which is what I love. And I think a lot of that resonates with a lot of business owners. Like it's not so much structure that, you know, you're just getting buried in the weeds. You're, you're putting enough of a foundation there that you can build on yet remain flexible and fast. And so I'll never forget that day. And it's, uh, it's been transformative uh, for me as, as a leader and uh, as a business owner with the guys at Firefly and, and how I go about doing things. So I just wanted to add that to, to what David shared as well. Yeah. So talk, yeah, talk about the next phase. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been a fast and furious two and a half years, Jeremy. The company's grown, grown significantly. And the centerpiece of all of this is this community of implementers really around the world at this point. That's what makes this whole system go because it's a, it's a great system of practical tools but it's this, this implementer community, now 400 plus strong around the world. So we wanna to continue to make sure we're giving those implementers what they need to be able to have their best practices out there and to build their businesses and build their clientele. So we wanna be able to support that. We wanna to continue to grow the brand, as we say, around the world, because we are around the world at this point. Um, and it's, it's really, we think we're in the second inning of a nine inning ball game or more, and we're still in the early days of, of what this can be and, and how far this can go. You know, uh, I talked about some of your investment criteria in the beginning, but I'm sure that was just kind of a, a surface level. Um, what are some of the types of companies that you look for or invest in? I can take that one, David. Um, so it's, it's, it's been a journey, Jeremy. Um, when we first started, uh, being entrepreneurs ourselves, like we, we had a few criteria and we'd look at, at about any industry um, where it was profitable, it was growing and it had good people. I mean, those are the, the basic uh, criteria. And as we've gotten along in, in our journey and, and learned a lot, learned what, what we really like, what we enjoy, what we're good at, uh, we've, we've gotten better about defining kind of what is, what is Firefly's target market? What's our niche? And one of those areas that we've uh, really focused on, I would say over the last 12 to 18 months, we call it the human capital sector. And, and so think of uh, any tools, resources that really help uh, business owners and leadership teams attract, retain, reward, develop people. Um, the reason why that became a niche, one, uh, our mission, our mission is around developing people. Uh, so that, that was pretty cool to have, you know, a niche that really aligns well with your mission. EOS was obviously very influential in that and how it impacts, uh, people's lives every day. And then there's some incredible trends going on in that space. Uh, every business big and small is thinking about those people questions. How do I get better people? How do I, uh, develop the people that I have and, and, and maximize their talents and give them opportunities. And so that's become a real, real focus of ours over the last 12 to 18 months. You know, um, you mentioned David traction and that immediately, uh, put that book in, in, you didn't realize there was a whole company behind it, but they were on your radar. Um, I would love to hear if you're able to share who's on your radar now. Um, from, and maybe you're not even in conversations with them, but it's just like, we read this book, we see, you know, it could, it's just on your radar. It's not saying you're going to invest in them. I'm not going to hold you to it. But if, if that person's listening, maybe they'll contact you. I don't know. Uh, who's on your, what companies or books are on your radar now? Sure. Well, I think again, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll pass the baton to Derek on this one. Cause you, I think you, you've done a lot of great work and we've talked a lot that we, at our Monday meetings every week, we're talking about companies and we're talking about themes and maybe talking about that executive, the entrepreneurial, the entrepreneurial toolkit idea that we've come up with. Yeah, we've, we've, uh, I don't know if we want to give away specific names, Jeremy, but, uh, we, we put a lot of work into, into finding the best companies out there and, um, and I think most of them have heard from us uh, at this point. Uh, that's, that's what I spend a lot of time doing personally for, for the Firefly team. But we've, we've developed this thesis. We call it the Entrepreneurial Toolkit. Uh, it kind of fits within human capital. And it's, it's really taken all those things for the entrepreneur. Um, what do they need to run their business well? And so an example of that is um, we, we think there's a lot of opportunity in this outsourced fractional space. 
so thinking of, you know, historically, there's been the, the fractional CFO. Uh, everybody knows about that, but there's some emerging concepts coming out that are really working well, like the virtual assistant, um, the fractional chief marketing officer, the fractional VP of sales. Like these are outsourced HR. These are some really technical high powered uh, positions within a company. They're very hard to make. They cost a lot of money. They're very risky. Um, you know, maybe 50% chance of getting the right hire, but it's, you're paying a lot of money for it. And so we think these fractional options might be better for a period of time for entrepreneurs. That's one. Uh, I think some of these uh, personality and behavioral assessment tools are just kind of making their way into the small to medium sized business world. Uh, we use Culture Index at Firefly um, and Colby. We like those two assessment tools really well for, for key hires and would obviously uh, love to, to grow in our relationship with both of those companies. Those are a few things. David, what would you add? Yeah, I think uh, and some, some may argue with me, Jeremy, but at, a, at the highest level, an entrepreneur needs, what do they want? They want the, they want the best information the best data to be able to make decisions. They want the best people on their team and they want the best customers, great customers, right? And so to Derek's point, how do we f fulfill those three? And so we're helping them, what are the companies that give people the best data to make decisions? What are the companies that help people get the best people, whether it's an assessment tool or the like? And how do we help people get best the best customers? Well, that's best practices around a fractional marketing person or a fractional. So those are areas we think are compelling around those three. And how do we fill that up? Yeah. Yeah, I could totally see that, not just from like a need standpoint from a company, but also because of the um, you know, the world, right? People are now working virtually. And so you can hire the best talent. Uh, all over the United States, even if they're not in your city now, right? Mm -hmm. So it's probably, I don't know if you've seen that speed up the process of people using these types of services or not. Have you felt that has played a role with, you know, plan pandemic and crisis? Absolutely. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Certainly in you know, some industries more than others, but things we thought would be over a 10 year time frame happened over a three to six months time frame. Right, so just the level of speed, the level of adoption that uh, EOS, as an example, they were putting on their conference last May, and that conference was intended to be 1,500 people all in person. Well, that conference had to pivot within 45 days and go completely virtual, and they still pulled it off with excellence. And the the evaluations and surveys would say uh, people had the experience there was was comparable to what they had it in person, which was great to see. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, I figure we would talk about um, two things. One, I don't know if there is one of kind of like your Nolan Bushnell uh, not investing in Apple story where you passed. Um, and on the flip side, talking about um, acquisition and navigating acquisition because you've navigated a bunch of those as well. Sure. Yeah. So I, I, there's there's certainly stories of ones we've passed on and I don't know if there's any as compelling as that one. Maybe I don't I'll know in the world, <laughs> yeah. David, if there's anyone as crazy as that one. <laughs> Maybe I'll tell the story and then Derek can follow up of, uh, of EOS and just the rough start that we had there because we, we, we had the good fortune to acquire the company. And then they get the cold community together every quarter. And so that community was brought together. And it was the first time we got to meet the community of 300 plus people brilliantly smart, talented people from all over the U.S. and really all over the world who come together. And so we were there and I was asked by our team to stand up in front of them and introduce ourselves as the, the new partner of EOS. And I made a few opening remarks, got a few head nods and smiles and people like, oh, OK, like this is going reasonably well. And so then I finished that up and I, people asked, hey, I said, do you have any questions? Happy to take a few questions. And people gave me a few softballs and like, okay, this is going well. And, and then somebody said, hey, tell us what your, your core values are at Firefly. And which you, we talked about that earlier. And I was a deer in the headlights and could not name one. And so here I was talking about we're a core values driven firm Core values matter to us. This is how we live our life. Okay, well, tell us about them. I couldn't name one. 
And so my failure, my embarrassment to me and our whole team had us come back together as a team and relook at those core values. So now those are ingrained of us because if they're truly who we are and living them, I shouldn't have to like memorize what I put on a poster. It comes out of me because, Hey, you, you, you see it exhibited in me and it's just how I'm living my life. And so that circles back to this core value conversation and, and, and what that now means to us before uh, it, it, it was a slogan. So. Yeah. From then on, I would wear a wristband like the quarterbacks wear with them on my yeah. wristband yeah, and be like, like, let me yeah. just uh, exactly. hold on here. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, uh, Derek, what about you? Any things stick out um, from your journey as, you know, maybe a big challenge? It doesn't have to be like a, a you know, you passed on something and end up being super successful or anything, but maybe it's a big challenge that you had to push through. There's lots of ups and downs uh, when you're an entrepreneur, when you're a business owner and you're leading, operating, owning, you know, small to medium sized businesses. There's just a lot of ups and downs. And I think, I think one of the challenges we face is, you know, everybody that gets into buying companies and wanting to lead, they, they feel like, okay, everything's just going to go smooth. It's going to go up and to the right. And, you know, the, the world we live in is anything but that very, uh, it doesn't happen very often where a company is just kind of smooth sailing up into the right. There's, there's big decisions, big challenges, there's people issues, there's market issues that come up, uh, sometimes investor issues. And it's just, there's a lot of challenges. And, and I think that's why it's good to kind of have, you know, great partners uh, at Firefly and that and for uh, entrepreneurs out there that, you know, own a company, that's why it's great to have a, a, you know, solid leadership team because all those ups and downs that come every week, every quarter, you got to have a team, you got to have a group of people, you know, with a set of core values, a similar mission and a vision for the company that, that sustains you through those ups and downs. Otherwise you just won't get through it. Yeah. You know, David, you mentioned patterns also. I'm wondering, you know, when, you know, you probably, you know, Derek, both you and, and David probably get a lot of questions from companies and, and guidance, you know, they want your guidance. What were some of the, the struggles this past year that um, people were talking about and how they kind of navigate them? This is probably, these are uncharted waters that we've been in the past year. What, what challenges did they come with that you had to talk through um, I guess, as a, as a team. Yeah, you said it right, Jeremy. It wasn't uncharted waters. It's something that uh, even though I feel like I've developed some pattern recognition in my pattern recognition, pandemic wasn't one of those I'd seen before. So <laughs> that was, a, that was a, a new one, but we set up uh, the communication rhythm just increased that much more. And the, com the communication between us and between the team at a level that I would not have anticipated how, how great it was and how great they were able to come together under this crisis uh, to, to come up with a game plan to move forward and uh, move into the future. Because now you have companies who everybody was in the office and now most of their people in many cases were going home to work virtually and trying to work through that. Trying to, we were very big on culture and how do we develop a great culture that fills people up and now you, how do you keep a culture together when you're not seeing them? Uh, one of our companies uh, here in Indianapolis, Dealers Wholesale, we had a brand new CEO. He'd been on the job 60 days, and now he had to face this. He didn't even really know his team yet, let alone being able to. And now they're all out of the building. So here he is trying to get to know his team, um, develop a rapport with that team, get that team to trust him, and they're not together. And so they were just being able to give them some of the tools. Some of those are EOS tools. Some of them are other tools that we've used just through our experience to help navigate those waters was, was important. Yeah. That's uh, something to be thrown into. It's not an easy situation. Yeah. Um, I'm going to ask each of you about maybe your favorite navigating acquisition story. Um, before I do, I want to point people towards your website. Everyone should check out the firefly group.com. It's spelled the firefly grp.com. Check it out. Check what they're doing. 
Um, are there any other places we should point people towards on your website or online? Yes, yeah, certainly we have a presence on LinkedIn. We're always looking to connect with people on LinkedIn as well. So you can find us there under the Firefly group or individually by name, Derek Smith or David Mann or Mark Snyder. So we're all out there. Uh, that's a good place as well. Um, so favorite ac navigating acquisition uh, story. You want to start on that one, Derek? Would you like me to? Let me think for a second, Jeremy. Uh, one one that sticks out to there's me. There's some good stories, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. I'll ask There's some good question. stories thinking through that. While you think about it, um, that I saw with Spring Mill Venture Partners, uh, one of them got acquired by Dolby, another got acquired by Brooks Automation. I don't know if either of those would be interesting or something else. Yes, sir, certainly we can tell the story I'll, I'll, I'll tell, tell the story of that it goes back a little bit but when I first got into this business as a as a partner was at Spring Mill Venture Partners here in town uh, one of the founding partners of that and we had a chance to invest in a healthcare services company called BioStorage Technologies and BioStorage Technologies was a special specimen storage and management company and that could be storing in test tubes blood urine serum Lots of things as be, as, as uh, genome mapping became such a more important part of our world, the more valuable these samples became to folks and they wanted to keep them longer because they could know they could revisit them to use them. And we had followed the company for a period of time. It was very early on. Um, and we were trying to get to know them and we invested in them. They were maybe a million dollars in revenue or so. And so it was a, we, we invested in the round and in venture capital, you're always reserving capital for the next round and the next round after that. This is a company that took off and never needed another round of capital, became profitable quickly. And it was, it was nearly nine years later when we eventually sold it for a great exit to a public company. Uh, one of the stories I'll tell about them is in their early days, they were trying to get customers and uh, they keep all of their samples in these uh, large commercial type refrigerators have to be held at a certain temperature. And in those days we had a handful of customers maybe, but people wanted to come in and tour our facility. So they filled up the test tubes with water, <laughs> wanted to make sure those refrigerators were full so people could see what well, that we had, we had stuff in them. Um, if they asked us a question, we would have been honest about them, but we just want to show them, Hey, we, here's what we, Here's what we have going. So I love the that. things you have to do as an entrepreneur just to get going and get started. They they were willing to be scrappy. You don't want to be like out. see one test tube in there. So wait, I'm your only customer. Yeah, exactly. I'm a little bit scared. <laughs> yeah. And so Brooks Automation acquired the company and they wanted it, that happened nearly from start to finish in 45 days, which is wow. crazy, crazy speed, right? Because I, th I think for them, maybe they wanted, they were a public company. They wanted to make an announcement to the street at their next, uh, their next call. And so they wanted to be able to use this as part of that story. That was good. Is, is that like the golden child uh, occurrence where they raise around, they, they get profitable quickly, they grow and then sell. Is that like the it's ultimate one, yeah, it's one of those, perfect it's one of those journey? Where I, I want to put more money into a company like that, right? It's the ones that are struggling that need my money that are less likely, but it, it, it grew great. Uh, so as I said, from a, a million dollar revenue start to, to a nine, it sold for nine figures. And so that was a great, great success. That's story. amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if you want to bring any up to current in the Firefly or Derek, you uh, want to yeah. bring any up from, from your thought? Yeah, a, a few, a few stories. I, when I, when I think about great stories from our journey at the Firefly group, I think of, I think of people, I think of individuals at each company and, um, I think of a, a guy named Jason uh, that we've had the opportunity to work with. He, he works at our manufacturing business and started out running a machine. He always had just uh, natural leadership gifts, a lot of drive. And fast forward a few years, he's now our shop foreman at that business. And that talk about fulfillment uh, for us at the Firefly Group, like seeing someone 
with a lot of drive and giving them the training, the development opportunities and the promotion opportunities to grow in their career, to have more responsibility, make better uh, income and really make an impact on their lives. I think of uh, a guy by the name of Vic who shared with me one time, he's like, um, and this is the best place I've ever worked. And I'm mm. like, man, Vic, thank you so much for telling me that because you just don't know how much blood, sweat and tears goes into building a company. And to hear that is just, it's just game changing for us. And, and for me, I've got a funny story. It's not, not so much of well, it's tied to people, but uh, when I'm not going to share the name of the company, but when we bought it, um, we were all excited to to get up in front of the employees and, and announce that, you know, we're, we were the, the new owners. We were partnering with the leadership team and the, uh, the, the former owners get up and say that they have, they've sold the business. And this is in front of all the employees, like 70 employees or something. And um, they said, uh, we have a, a letter here for all of you. And the, the employees, you gotta, you gotta think they were in their heads they were thinking, Oh my gosh, I got to, I got a bonus check. The, the owners are going to give me a bonus check. And so he hands out this letter to every employee. And we had no clue. We're standing in front of all the employees as the new owner. And they open it up and it's a termination letter. It's this technicality wow. that they're, they're all officially terminated and will be rehired by the Firefly group. And then we had to get up and, and talk about who we are and how we love core values while everybody's thinking, Am I going to get hired? Did I just did I just oh. lose my job? And so that was a rough start for us at, at that particular company. It's like what not to do when you're transitioning a company? <laughs> Hiring every that's your next book. What not to do when you're transitioning a company? And that is hire everyone a letter right before we're about to make an announcement. We took over. Like welcome yeah. to the the Firefly Group. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was fun. yeah that was that's crazy. That was fun. I um, wish they would have consulted uh, consulted you on that one before they did. Yeah, it. yeah, and then they, they they walked out of the building and we were left standing there. How like, do you think that's a good idea though? That, it's like, who were on the board? Like, yeah, that. Let's go with that one. Hire yeah. everyone. A, let's <laughs> give them a letter and fire them. Yeah, yeah. it's not really firing. I've got a I've got a better story, Jeremy, than, than that. Uh, when we when we bought EOS, Gino Ekman, Don Tenney, the two co founders of that. Uh, David mentioned they had twelve criteria. Price was only one. Another one of those criteria was core values. And uh, from the very first time we met them, all the way up until the day of closing, they were challenging us to see if we really met their core values bar. And that was so unique. And that was difficult, like, to go through that because, you, you know, you negotiate, and you, you go through con legal contracts and all this stuff. And they were... Uh, challenging us making sure that we had the core values that core values match throughout the whole process and man that was uh, mm -hmm. an incredible experience just kind of on the other side of things uh, for us and that really set us up well and helped us understand the dna of that company um, and how to be a good steward of it going forward i want to be the first one to thank you both for this, for sharing your knowledge, sharing your expertise. Everyone check out the fireflygroup.com. We'll link it up and check out other episodes. Um, thank you both. Uh, Dave and Derek has been an absolute pleasure. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Thank you for having us. Thank you, Jeremy. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walked through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand right now. I'm feeling like a hundred grand.